Welcome to an engineering economics video. We are looking at chapter six in the textbook and the topic we're going to cover in this chapter is annual equivalence analysis. So we have already looked at a few ways of screening projects. So if you're an engineer in the head of, the head of an engineering department uh, at a company, and you need to decide what projects your department is going to do in order to make the company more profitable. Um, and you have several different options. You need to have some systematic way of evaluating them to decide which projects would be a good idea to do and which ones you might want to take a pass on. So we've looked at payback period, discounted payback period, um, and present worth. And so that present worth analysis is telling us if we look at all the costs, um, all the revenues, um, all the pluses and minuses for a project, and we calculate what their total present value is worth at a given interest rate, whether or not that would be a desirable project to pursue. Annual equivalent worth is essentially taking that one step farther. Instead of looking at just one uh, lump sum value, uh, we are going to take that value or worth of the project and spread it out over the life of the project so that we can uh, essentially determine how much money is it going to be making us per year in a way. It's looking at how much revenue is it going to generate. Is this project going to make the company a certain amount of money per year, or is it potentially going to be losing the company money? And of course, if the project loses money, that's a project we would not want to pursue. So the reason we might want to use an annual equivalence analysis instead of uh, simply a present worth analysis is because uh, present worth will tell us how much a project is worth but it doesn't necessarily tell us when we're going to receive the benefit of that project. Uh, for instance, I'm just going to use some big numbers here. Let's say we analyze a project and find that, that this project is going to earn us a billion dollars. That sounds great. Let's do that project. But what if it takes um, like a hundred years to achieve that? Um, then, uh, then, then that may not be, um, project that we want to pursue. Maybe we want something that has a shorter time period. Um, also, if we're comparing two projects and one is a relatively short project and another one is a really long project, um, the long project might be worth more, but because it takes us so much longer to receive the benefits of that project, uh, the shorter project may be more desirable. So if we can take those two projects of different lengths and find what they're annual averages, what they're worth per year, then we can make a better comparison between those two projects. So the basic, um, uh, the basic uh, um, steps that we're going to follow here to do our annual equivalent worth is um, first we are going to find the net future worth of the project. So rather than finding out what it is uh, right now as a present value, we're going to find out in the end when all is said and done, what is the project worth at the end of the project. And then we will um, choose a desired interest rate, an MARR, minimum attractive rate of return, that we want to make as a company. If we're going to, if we're going to do this project, if we're going to invest in it, we want to make a certain amount of money. Maybe that's 10%, maybe it's 15 who knows what that interest rate is? That's determined um, company by company. But let's say we choose 10% as our interest rate. That's the rate we will use then in our payment function in order to take that future value and divide it up into equal payments, equal annual payments. And if we find using that desired interest rate I that the annual equivalence is greater than zero, and that means that that is a project we want to do. That's going to make us more than our 10%. If it's equal to zero, which is unlikely, that's almost like flipping a coin and having it land on its edge. 
but if it comes out to be exactly zero, then we would be indifferent. That means that this uh, project is going to make us exactly our desired rate of return. So uh, it's kind of a toss up. And uh, if it's less than zero, then we definitely want to reject that investment. It is not going to make the desired rate of return. So let's look at an example using this annual equivalence analysis where we are in charge of a facility that is considering replacing cold fire boilers um, with some other type of, of boiler that's going to be more efficient. And we're also going to uh, replace the control instruments with an upgraded system. This project is going to uh, cost us $159,000. So that's the upfront investment cost. And the project is going to have a lifespan of 12 years. And for many of the projects we look at, at the end of the life cycle of the project, we are able to sell the equipment um, in order to get some type of salvage value, even if it's just like scrap metal cost. But there's usually some salvage value. In this particular case, there is no salvage. At the end of 12 years, our, um, our equipment that we are buying is basically going to be worthless. The new system is going to use $14,000 less in electricity per year. So we are going to have um, fewer ongoing expenses. And those savings will increase over time, 4% per year. So that's the benefit of doing this project. That's why we would be willing to spend $159,000 up front. It's to get that $14,000 in savings per year. It's going to increase over time. And in addition to our savings in electricity, we're also going to use $40,950 less in coal per year. And that savings is going to increase by 5% per year. Now, if we're going to do this project, our company is basically saying we only want to do this project if it's going to uh, at least uh, get us a 10% return on our investment, a 10% interest compounded. And uh, so we want to determine, okay, so what is the equivalent savings due to this improvement? So let's go ahead and set up a spreadsheet. Okay, so we're going to start off with a completely blank spreadsheet, and the first column is going to be N for the number of years. We'll start off with zero for our investment year, the year that we um, spend to, to get this project started. And then we have one, two, three, and then I'll s highlight those three and copy it down. I think this was a, to say it was a 12 year project. I'm going to go back to the previous slide so I can see more of the data. Uh, yes, it's a 12-year um, project. Okay, and then let's look at our savings. We're going to save both electricity and coal. The electricity we're going to save is going to be 14,000, and it's going to increase. 4% uh, per year. So we're going to start off with $14,000 in savings. And the following year, it's going to be equal to that previous year's value times 1.04. That's our, going to be the, the full amount plus 4%. So that's going to increase. And that's just going to continue to increase throughout the life of the project. The savings in coal is going to start off 40,950 and it's also going to increase at 5% per year. So the next year it's going to be equal to that that previous value times 105% or 1.05. And that's going to continue throughout the life of the project. Oh, I just realized something. I started my savings in year zero, and that's incorrect. So I'm going to delete these last two values here. Take all of this and cut it with a Control-X. 
and come down to the next row and paste it with a control V. So these savings don't start until the end of year one, all the way through year 12. So that's better. And let's see what else. Um, the cost, 159000 And that is a negative cost. It is a cost, so it's negative. Uh, these other values are all positive savings. Um, we can almost think of them as revenue because a penny saved is a penny earned. And let's see. Okay, I think we can go on to the next slide now. We're going to use the 10% interest, and we want to know the annual equivalent savings. Okay, so, so far we've got these three columns for our savings in electricity, our savings in coal, and the original investment amount. So we can make another column here for our net cash flow. And this is going to be uh, basically the total of our costs and uh, revenues for each given year. So it's just going to be the sum of the values from the three previous columns. So obviously in year zero, we only have the investment. Uh, that's a cost of 159,000. But in all of these subsequent years, we add together our savings in both electricity and coal. So these are our positive revenues and our one negative cash flow amount. Now if we make a column now for the future value, what these values uh, are going to be at the end of the 12 year project life cycle, that's going to be equal to the FB future value of the total cash flow for that given year. Um, and, well, first we need to put in the rate. We said we were going to use a rate of 10%. That's our, um, our rate we need to get out of this investment. So at a 10% investment rate. And the number of periods. The number of periods for this first value is not going to be zero. It's going to be 12 years. This amount of money um, that we spent on this project, we could have invested in a different project and it could have earned us 10 percent over the next 12 years so what would that future value be at the end of 12 years so for n per i'm going to just write in a formula here 12 minus this value so 12 minus 0 will be 12 that's the number of periods that that first uh, row will collect interest and there's no payment we're going to use this as our present value but I'm going to make it negative. And the reason why is because I still want this future value to be negative. This is a cost. Okay, this value is a cost, and it's still going to be a cost 12 years in the future. Uh, this is basically telling us um, how much money we are potentially missing out on by spending this money, this $159,000, on this project instead of some other project. And then as I copy this down, all of my other positive values remain positive. This is the revenue. So if we got this $54,950 and we invested it at 10 years, uh, or at 10% for 12 minus one is 11 years, at the end of 11 years, it will be worth 156,778. And you can see down here at the bottom that the, um, the money that is made in the last year of the project, it doesn't have any time to collect interest, so its future value is equal to its original value. And then I can sum to find the total future value of this project. And so I'm finding that we have a total future value of 959000 $282.17. And it looks like that's where I'm going to have to stop, and we'll have to finish up this example problem in the next video.